Welcome to the eLearning on Epic Beaker AP Case Builder. Click the Start button to start this training. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Access Case Builder Enter an intra-op consult Assign users to a case Enter a gross description Add tasks to a specimen Add a flag to a specimen Copy a provider on case results to receive EPIC production access, you will need to complete the Beaker assessment at 100% given the listed competencies. Please review these competencies and note any that are satisfied, in whole or in part, during the course of this lesson. Our patient has undergone a parathyroidectomy. Two parathyroid specimens were sent to the lab, specimen A is frozen and specimen B is in formalin. You receive the specimens in the lab and are ready to build a case in Beaker. Note that building a case can be done by a pathologist, pathology resident or AP assistant. To build a new case, click Case Builder in the Epic Main Toolbar. Type the specimen ID in the Cases field or scan the barcode on the specimen's label and then click Accept. You can search for the specimen ID under Case Receiving. Click Lab in the Epic Main Toolbar. Click Case Receiving in the drop-down list. Click Expected in the Case Receiving Toolbar. The specimen ID is located in the Container column. You also can build a case from this view. Click the specimen ID of 49 HSC. Click Case Builder in the Case Receiving Toolbar. Case Builder automatically assigns the case number. The S prefix in the case number indicates this is a surgical pathology case. Other prefixes indicate other types of cases, such as A for autopsy and C for cytology. Case Builder also displays information from the specimen documentation, including the specimen source, collection date, time, and specimen collector. The R column indicates the method used to receive the specimen. A check mark in the R column indicates the specimen was received manually by typing in the specimen ID during case creation. If a barcode icon displays in the received column, the specimen was received using a scanner. Receive specimen B by clicking the check mark or scanning the barcode on the specimen's label. Click the check mark. The check mark in the snowflake column indicates the specimen is frozen. Click Intraop in the Case Builder toolbar to add an intraoperative consultation. In the text field, the intraop consult for the frozen specimen was entered. Note, only pathologists may preliminary verify the intraop consult. If you are a resident or transcriptionist, add the intraop consult text and click the close button. The information will save and be ready for the pathologist to preliminary verify. Click the preliminary intraop button. The logged in user is automatically added as an assigned user for the case. Each case must have a pathologist assigned. If you need to add a user to the case, click in the blank users assigned field and search for a user by clicking the magnifying glass icon. Click grossing to add a gross description. You can scan the specimen barcode to indicate you are adding a gross description for that specimen. The specimen field displays the specimen's letter ID. We also added the piece count for each block. To add the piece count for each block, click in the piece field and scan the specimen barcode the number of appropriate times. You may also enter the number manually. A gross description for specimen A was entered. Let's add a gross description for specimen B. Click the specimen field. Type the letter B in the field and press enter on your keyboard. The piece count was entered for you. If you are a resident and a transcriptionist will be advancing the gross description to a gross done status, enter text into the description field and click close to save this information. This allows the transcriptionist to add additional text and advance the case. For this example, you are adding the gross and advancing the case to gross done. Click gross done. Notice that tasks for each specimen automatically display in the task table. 
Right now we are viewing the tasks for specimen A. To view the tasks for specimen B, click the protocol for specimen B. Tasks for specimen B display in the task table. To add a task, click the plus symbol in the add task field. You can filter the list of tasks by category. Click special stain. Click Alshin Blue, pH 1.0. Click Accept. The task is added to the task table for specimen B. To delete a task, select the task in the table and click Delete Selected. To add a flag to a specimen, click in the flag column. Click the flag for specimen B. The case info window opens. A flag may be added to a case, specimen or a task. For this example, specimen B is highlighted for the flag. Click the flags field. Click the magnifying glass icon to search for a flag. For this example, we selected the inadequate fixative flag. Click accept. A flag and note were added for you. Click accept. You can hover your mouse over the flag icon to view the comments. Click Next when you are ready to proceed. Additional actions are available under the Actions. Menu icon. This icon is also called the Happy Face. Click this icon to open the Actions menu. One of the options is the ability to copy a provider on the results. To do this, click CC Results in the drop-down list. Providers in the CC recipient field are notified when the case results are available in the patient's chart. A provider was added for you. Click Accept. To save the case information and send the case to the outstanding list, click Accept. The case displays on the outstanding list. This concludes the training portion of this module. Click Next to proceed to the Knowledge Check. Knowledge Check. In this knowledge check, you will access case builder, enter an intra-op consult, assign users to a case, enter a gross description, add tasks to a specimen, add a flag to a specimen, copy a provider on case results. You will be given scenarios with actions to complete. These scenarios are comprised of multiple steps worth one point each. You are to walk through the steps to complete the scenario. You have three chances to complete each step of a scenario. At which point, the step is completed for you and no points are earned for that step. While there is consistently more than one way to perform an action in EPIC, the steps to complete the scenarios follow the steps learned during this module. There is no pass or fail. This knowledge check is simply a way for you to gauge your understanding of the content. Good luck!